What's up YouTube? Ian Sandusky back here again for Let's Machine. Today we're going to be going through what some tool holders are used for, when to use them, and you know some of their best applications inside your CNC mill. Uh, first and foremost, very common, uh, everything we're going to use today is an ER40 taper uh, with an imperial, you know, not metric pole set on top. Um, you know, just in case you may have something different, whatever it may be. First off, ER40 spring collet. Um, very, very common. You know, this is the shortest one available. You put a spring collet inside here that's close to your tool diameter. Tighten it down in here, like so. And the spring collet will, you know, squeeze on your tool that way. Um, the advantages are that they're very, very common, very easy to use. Um, you know, you buy one set of collets, you can use that for just about every tool you got. Um, up to you know whatever the max size is there. I think five eighths or three quarter maybe the max there. Um, very common, very handy, easy to use. I use these all the time for the majority of the things I do. Uh, it is very short, so you don't get a lot of deflection or chatter that way. In that same vein, the medium size and long holders. These work the exact same way as my ER40 spring collet because they are an ER40 spring collet. The only difference is the length of the tool holder. Um, so you can see, you know, this is going to come out further. You never want to use a long holder unless you can't use a medium holder. You never want to use a medium holder unless you can't use a short holder. Reason being, deflection. Deflection and chatter. The longer you have your tool and tool holder out from the spindle, the more chatter and deflection you're going to get. End of story. Um, always use as short tools as you can. Use as short holders as you can. Pretty easy. Next. Um, we have the ER, oh no, this is an ER, this is TG100. This is just a larger size spring collet holder than these. Um, you know, this will hold up to one inch as opposed to three quarter or five eighths, whatever it may be. Works the exact same way. Uh, make sure you keep things in there as tight as possible and as short as possible. These kind of things are handy compared to solid holders because you can adjust your tool length very easily. Um, if I tighten it up and my tool's out here and I actually want it shorter, I can just loosen it, move it in, tighten it back up. That's why you use them, they're handy. Um, if you program something with one of these and you put it in this holder, make sure this holder isn't gonna crash. Look at the difference in the size, right? The footprint's different. Something to keep in mind. Besides that, um, moving on, obviously if I have to use these, I will, but I'd always prefer to use solid holders. Um, the advantage of solid holders is that that tool has nowhere to go. Um, you know, the half inch tool fits in a half inch sleeve in there, I guess you want to call it, or a half inch bore, it has nowhere to go. Um, you can only use solid holders on tools that have flats on them because they're held in by a set screw as you can see right there. So you put it in, line up the set screw with the uh, flat in the tool, tighten it down, tool is nowhere to go. Um, very little chatter, you can get your max speeds and speeds out of these, you know, besides shrink fit collets or whatever advanced stuff you may have, I don't have that stuff. These are very handy. Um, they are limited in that you can only use that size holder for that size tool. I can't use a half inch tool and a five eighths holder. Doesn't work. Um, very short, not a lot of room to move, love it. If you can't use that, you can always use a bigger solid holder. You can see this works the exact same way. Um, this one will have two flats on it. You can buy your tools with flats on them or you can grind them on, it's completely up to you. Um, I like to buy my end mills with them on them. Uh, very rarely is it bad to have a flat on the tool. You can always grind one on later if you have to, but it's easy just to buy them on there. So this one would have two flats. Uh, I think that bore is you know one inch or whatever. Again, you don't want to use a larger size if a smaller size will do. Um, also with our solid holders in the same vein, long solid holders. This would be handy for getting in somewhere. So I'm doing a pocket, you know, I gotta get way down in there. I would never use this if I can use this instead. But I would rather use this solid holder, you know, you can see the, the uh, set screw there, than this. This will chatter less than this, but will still chatter more than this. You follow? Always use as short as possible. Next up, we have a driver chuck. This has a key in it, or a driver holder, I guess, on a chuck. But it has a key in it. Uh, I put my cutter head on there, line it up with a key, and put a bolt in. Uh, it has a top hole, I just tighten that down. Obviously these are great for face mills, any kind of uh, high speed milling, we'll often use these, shell mills, anything like that. Um, it has nowhere to go, it can't spin on me because it's nice and tight. 
Uh, it has a key, obviously that means it can't slide. You're limited with these in that you can't get down in areas very far, so you know, face mounts, that's where you're gonna use them. Next up, we have a uh, taper chuck, taper collet, taper holder, whatever you want to call it, uh, taper holder, I guess. This is gonna work the same way as your manual drill chuck. You have to use a drift to get it out by hammering it through that. Um, you put it in by putting on something hard, hitting it down. Uh, it's essentially like a friction fit. The top of this drill will be shaped like this with a flat on it, so it cannot spin out on you. Um, you know, if you put a drill in here and you don't tighten it down properly, that drill can spin. Um, it may end up being longer than you want it. It may do a lot of things you don't want. This way, it is in there. It cannot move out unless you hit it with a drift. Um, the disadvantage to this is if you get this drill stuck, you will probably saw out your motor. <laughs> in your mill rather than you know just spin the drill that being said you can do a lot more aggressive cutting with these um, you know i'd rather use this than this for a drill you won't find small drills with that taper on them that much anymore uh, because it costs more to make so usually this is reserved for larger size drills and that's okay lastly i have here in front of me a standard old drill chuck on an ear or on a 40 taper uh, tool holder I don't use these almost at all. I have some from back in the day. You would use these when you have a drill that can't really work with anything else or you know, you're know you out of holders. I would rather use a spring holder um, because this the drill will tend to, to spin on you. You know, this is a uh, pretty typical key chuck. Put your key in, tighten her down. Um, save these for your manual machines. You know, you, if you can't, don't have the feel of being able to feel, feel when your drill is starting to bite and such. I don't like using these. Some people love these. Some production shops use these for everything. I personally don't. Um, hope this has been helpful, guys. This is just a smattering of some of the tool holders you may encounter and some of the circumstances under which you may want to use some. Um, if you have cooler holders than I do, by all means, use those. Uh, none of these have through spindle coolant, none of these have shrink fit or anything of the like. But, uh, you know, for a pretty standard set, this should cover just about everything. Thank you very much for hanging out with me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe below if you want to see more videos. You take care.